the previous videos, we talked about heat engines and how to estimate or how to define efficiency of heat engines. And heat engines are essentially devices that take in energy in the form of heat or thermal energy and then convert part of it to useful work, usually in the form of mechanical or electrical work. Um, to, in this video, we will look at some other kind of devices that whose primary purpose is to move heat. Uh, that is either to cool something that is at a low temperature or to warm up something that is already at a high temperature. And these are called heat pumps and refrigerators. And uh, these devices we find all around us. So you might have an air conditioner in your home or in your car. Uh, there are certainly air conditioners in this room. And uh, there are different kinds of air conditioners, different sizes uh, and different shapes and different uh, working fluids different ways of operation and so on. And uh, similarly, we also have heat pumps. Heat pumps are primarily used in cold countries to heat up homes and offices and buildings. And uh, they are increasingly starting to replace uh, electrical heating, which was the norm for heating um, uh, in living spaces before. So uh, it's important that we look at refrigerators and heat pumps because these are very, very growing very, very fast, especially because India is growing economically. And one of the first things that people buy when they have enough money to spend other than food is an air conditioner. And uh, so it's important for us to understand how this work and how to define how their efficiency is defined and how to make it more efficient and how to make it more eco-friendly or environment friendly. So let's look at what a heat pump is. So from thermodynamics perspective, a heat pump or a refrigerator is a device that moves heat from one place to the other, right? So normally speaking, if we have heat, uh, let's say we have a body at high temperature and uh, another at, cold, uh, at, at colder temperature, it's obvious that uh, energy flows from the higher temperature to the lower temperature and we don't need any device to do that, right? But if we want to move heat from a low temperature to a high temperature, then we need devices because it doesn't happen automatically as we will see when we formally introduce the second law. But before we do that, we'll look at um, formally what is a refrigerator and what is a heat pump. So um, a refrigerator, uh, it's indicated by a circle with an R, is a device that takes in heat from a low temperature reservoir. Uh, let's call this reservoir characterized by a temperature TL and uh, dumps this uh, heat into a higher temperature reservoir. Let's say that this reservoir is characterized by a temperature TH. And to do that, it will require some kind of external work input. And this work input is required as we will see when we formally again introduce the second law. Without this work input, obviously I cannot take heat from a low temperature uh, sink or a low temperature source and dump it into a high temperature sink, right? So this is obvious because we know it from everyday experience that I cannot take a colder object and take heat from it and give it to a hotter object without, of course, doing electrical work or me mechanical work, right? So this is uh, what this is. And we will call this uh, heat that is taken from the low temperature reservoir as QL and the heat that is uh, given to the high temperature reservoir as QH. And we will call the work input as W in, right? And so uh, for a refrigerator, The primary goal is uh, maximizing for a refrigerator. What is a refrigerator doing? It's primarily moving heat from a cold temperature body uh, to a high temperature body, right? And so what's important here is removal of heat from a cold temperature reservoir or a, or a low temperature body, right? So uh, I want to maximize QL for a given work input, right? And uh, for a heat pump, the primary goal is uh, maximizing QH for given W in, 
right? So what is heat pump doing? It is heating up a particular space or an object that needs heating up, right? And how is it doing that? Because uh, we are doing work on this refrigerator or heat pump and it is delivering heat to a high temperature, um, uh, high temperature sink, right? And so therefore, uh, here the delivery of this heat is more important than the removal of heat from a low temperature reservoir. Um, and so, I uh, want to maximize QH for a given WN. And uh, if we consider a system that looks like this, right, a system that encompasses either a refrigerator or a heat pump, right. So refrigerator I represent by R, heat pump, refrigerator, heat pump, right. So whether it is a refrigerator or a heat pump, if I draw a, a red dashed line is the system, this is a stationary system and it is a closed system, right? Uh, because although there is fluid circulation inside the system, uh, it is not really entering or leaving the system as I have drawn it here. And so therefore, this is a closed stationary system and I can write the energy balance for this as as uh, Q minus W equals delta E and in this case because this is a stationary system, I can write it as delta U, right. And usually the way it works is just like heat engines, refrigerators and heat pumps also operate in cycles and so when we operate in a cycle, for a complete cycle, delta U is obviously 0 because U is a state function and so therefore uh, when I start from a point, come back to the same point, I have the same U and essentially and so therefore delta U is 0. So uh, for a cyclic process, I have Q minus W equals 0 and so therefore uh, Q net is equal to W net. That is the um, heat transfer to the system should be equal to the work transferred, uh, sorry, the heat transfer to the system should be equal to the work done by the system, right. In this case, the work done by the system is negative, of course, and I can write this as also if I differentiate this, I can write Q dot net equals W dot net, right. From here, um, what is Q net? That is the heat um, supplied to the system, and that is QL is the heat supplied to the system. Of course, QH is removed, so Q net is QL minus QH. So, QL minus QH and this is equal to um, W net is uh, there is the work being done on the system. So this has got to be negative W in, right. And um, so QL minus QH by minus W in and uh, so we have uh, QH equals QL plus W, right. So the heat that is dumped into this high temperature reservoir is um, equal to the summation of the work input plus the heat removed from the low temperature reservoir, right. And uh, similarly, I can write uh, from here by similar analogy, I can write QH dot equals QL dot plus W in dot. And while the units of each of these are in joules, the units of each of these are in joule per second or what, right. And uh, so obviously, uh, you can see that the output uh, that is desired, uh, let us say for a heat pump, the QH is the output that is desired and W in is the what is costing money. That is because we need to uh, spend on electricity to run a compressor or to uh, run a pump or some other thing for different kinds of refrigeration devices or heat pumps. And so therefore, this is what we spend money on, whereas this is the desired output for a heat pump. And so therefore, and as you can see all of these are positive quantities. So if I divide QH by W in, I get a number greater than 1, which is why it is usually not called efficiency. It is called by a different name and that different name is called a coefficient of performance or COP, right. Um, So uh, we define coefficient of performance uh, 
uh, or COP. Um, let's first write it for a heat pump. COP for a heat pump is uh, QH divided by W in and the instantaneous COP of a heat pump uh, can be also written as QH dot divided by W in dot, right? And uh, this is typically obviously always greater than 1 uh, and so therefore, uh, this is not called efficiency because efficiency is usually a number um, that is associated between 0 and 1, right? So, we do not call it efficiency, we call it coefficient of performance. So, what numbers are typical? So, for a household, uh, you know, split air conditioner, we can expect numbers between 2 and 4, right? For automotive air conditioners, we can expect numbers between 1 and maybe 2, right? And uh, for large air conditioners like the one we have in block 9 at IIT Gandhinagar, the coefficient of performance will be higher, more than 4 sometimes, right? And so, it depends on the kind of system, it depends on um, what the configuration is. Sometimes, whether you are rejecting heat to air or whether you are rejecting it to water can make a big difference in what the COP will turn out to be, right? But nonetheless, this is how it is defined and uh, we can say that this is QH divided by W in or QH dot divided by W in dot, right? And this is for a heat pump. Uh, for a refrigerator, I will have um, what is important is QL, right? Because that is the heat that I remove. So, for example, if I have a household refrigerator, then the low temperature source is the vegetables and the fruits and uh, the other food items that are stored inside the refrigerator. And the high temperature reservoir is the room itself into which I am dumping the heat using electrical work that I am using it to run the refrigerator, right? So, the low temperature. Uh, need to be maintained at low temperature and that is why I need a refrigerator. So, it, the important thing for a refrigerator then is to remove heat from the low temperature source and so therefore, the COP of a uh, refrigerator is defined as uh, QL divided by WN. This of course, um, the denominator is always what costs money, right? What, what makes us pay for it, right? And so, that is WN and uh, similar to this one, I can write um, yeah, the heat refrigerator as uh, QL dot by W in dot, right? So, this is the definition and this is always true and uh, when we do second law and when we go to uh, how, what, uh, what is the maximum COP that you can derive from a given heat pump or a given refrigerator, we will be putting temperature numbers here instead of uh, QL and W in, but please remember that this is the def definition and so therefore, this is always true. Whereas, when we calculate the maximum COP uh, of a refrigerator or a heat pump, that is the maximum. That is not the COP of a real heat pump or a real refrigerator. Whereas, if we want to calculate the COP of a real refrigerator or a heat pump, we need this because this is how it is defined, right? Mm -hmm.